Uh, let's look at the fishes. Was it cool? It was fishes. All right, welcome to that. <laughs> the batteries are just horrible. Nailed it. <laughs> welcome to Does Buffy Suck, the podcast where we're watching Buffy and uh, seeing if it sucks. We've got two classic viewers, myself, Keith, and my co-host, Michael, and then two newer viewers, Rayanne and Julian. So this episode is The Pack. Came out April 7th, 1997. So to set the scene, to set the time and place in the world, I was looking up top movies, top songs, all that shit. So it's the same as last week. Top movies, liar, liar. Top song is still Can't Nobody Hold Me Down, Puff Daddy featuring Mace. Nice. Wow. The top album is new. It's Nine Lives by Aerosmith. Oh. Mm. But I thought just to really help set the scene, I found a couple other charts. So the top song in Europe this week was Don't Speak by No Doubt. Nice. Uh, the top song in Canada, We Just Missed Every Day is a Winding Road by Sheryl Crow, Aww. which is a personal <laughs> favorite of mine. That. That second Sheryl Crow album, excellent, very good album. Instead, it's One Headlight by The Wallflowers. Oh, I love that song. So yeah, after uh, the previous three long, difficult weeks of uh, me hating this show, uh, I really like this one. And I always remembered liking this one, and I was like, I hope that I still like it, because I haven't seen it in a long-ass time. And yeah, I watched it, and it's season one, it's got problems, but overall, I was like, this. there's some meat on these bones. There's things I can at least talk about in this show because there's weird cool metaphor shit going on and that's what i'm all about i love like just the basic thing of like high school is hell so the high school is on the hell mouth like to me that's always what buffy was about and this episode has got some of that but how were y'all feeling about this xanderific episode uh i'm so mad at this show (laughs) why aren't there vampires (laughs) Oh, yeah. I mean, that's a problem. I can't argue with that. (laughs) It's so upsetting that there have been so many episodes and there are no vampires. And they just replaced vampires with hyenas because the exact same thing happens. It could have been vampires. Yeah, like if they were visiting the vampire exhibit at the zoo. (laughs) And then... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> exactly thank you for recognizing that is true though yeah that basic thing of when the vampire demon inhabits you yeah you lose yourself and you become all yeah i mean it is it's it's very much the same thing yes thank you yeah I, it's so funny i think you and i are gonna have such a like totally different things because i was like yeah awesome kids loves this episode and and it, i didn't hate it but I liked the shit ones you hated way more than this one. How about you, Julian? How'd you feel? I thought it was fine. Um, I I didn't love it. It's still. I think I'm still trying to get used to the the tone of these early Buffy episodes, which is very, I don't know, like it's jokier than or it's less serious than the later stuff. I think is, um, and maybe it's just because I've watched more of the later stuff that I'm more used to that tone. But you didn't think it was serious to dress up a tiny pig as a school mascot and then eat it? <laughs> <laughs> There's so very little meat on that pig. <laughs> I liked that part. Yeah, like they're really pushing hard in these early days to not be vampires or whatever. It's like they're already feeling like, oh, my God, how are we going to fill seven seasons? Like we really got to sell this idea that monster of the week is an appropriate thing. But it's crazy. There was one episode where it was like, yeah, vampires. And then they just went away from it. And we're at episode six. I just am very confused. I have been appreciating that there is more of the weaving the overall story into the episode than I remembered. Still, it's still not good, but... (laughs) Every once in a while, they talk about Angel or whatever, which is kind of like... Yeah, although there wasn't really that much of that in this one. This one really was pretty much Adventure of the Week, Hyena, Demon yeah, problems. for the most part. But there was they, they just talked about Angel a little bit, I guess. That's all, that's all there was in this one. Yeah, and I think next episode, it's called Angel. I don't remember shit about it, but surely to fuck next week is about vampires. <laughs> <laughs> like it has to be. Yeah, I hope yeah. so. I really do. <laughs> How'd you think, uh, Mike? How'd you like the first of our many to come Xander episodes? Uh, yeah, I think I'm kind of with Julian. Uh, maybe I was I was expecting it to blow me away because Keith was so excited about it, and Keith hates everything. And it was fine. There was still that, like, yeah, that monster of the week kind of like hokiness to it that was like hard to get on board with. But it was fine, you know. 
I liked it. Yeah, Keith, can you say, like, what what is it about this episode that made you like it so much more than the others? Let's, uh, you know what, let's just go through our little episode recap. And as we <laughs> okay. go, we'll see. Maybe, uh, maybe I'll draw people around to my way of thinking. And maybe not, because I did mention to, uh, so uh, our good friend Brad, who got me into the show in the first place, I was like, oh, yeah, man, fucking doing the podcast today. It's like this episode that, like, I was glad that the episode I remembered liking, I still like, because there's so many episodes coming that I remembered liking. So it's like, oh, good. Like, I still feel the same as I used to. So that's good. There's a bunch of stuff coming that I'm going to like. And he's like, I don't really remember that episode, but I'm pretty sure it was on somebody's list of, like, the top 10 worst. And it's like, yeah, well... What can you do? <laughs> you know, different amounts of mileage of uh, Xander becoming a hyena. I can see why that's not necessarily. <laughs> Was anyone like really sad that Owen didn't show up this episode? <laughs> I mean, I would have enjoyed if fucking pasty face Owen got eaten by the hyena kids. Like, while well, after they eat the principal, why not just go eat Owen? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was really unexpected where it was kind of like this kind of like light ish episode and then all of a sudden they murder the principal and eat him yeah well i guess that's one thing i liked is it, it did go in some weird places like there's even like just a scene where uh the hyena pack are they're just around a baby <laughs> it's like oh my god they already ate a pig and the principal yeah i hope they don't eat that baby and like that's quite a weird cool thing it's like if you're gonna just do a crappy goosebumps of the week story i like that it they really did raise the stakes. Like, they didn't pull back. That principal is dead. He got eaten. <laughs> That's messed up. Yeah. Yeah, it really is messed up because he wasn't normally, like, the, the quick killings have been, like, the flavors of the week. And then this is, I was like, wait a minute. Did they, is he dead? He's gone? The principal from day one? They didn't just eat him. They ate him up. <laughs> <laughs> they ate him up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know what? A very minor spoiler alert. Killing this principal opened the door for everyone's favorite principal, Armin Shimmerman. Yeah, I was thinking that same thing of just like, I didn't remember at all what happened to this principal. But I was like, man, this principal is a pain in the ass. This guy sucks. Like, I can't wait for the next principal. And then this principal got eaten. And I'm like, oh, shit. Well, I guess I'm getting my wish. Like, holy fuck. So to set the scene, we have a school trip to the zoo, and there's this gang of cool kids. It's like that guy Blaine from the other episode who was the one cool kid that was harassing Xander. Oh, the one that did it with uh, Praying Mantis? Yeah, Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Okay. So just imagine that guy, the coolest guy you've ever seen, (laughs) and then imagine four of him. It's like, how are you supposed to outcool that? They're just outcooling the fuck out of everyone, making everyone feel like a big nerd. <laughs> they were so lame. <laughs> They're the lamest bullies. <laughs> Do any of these people make appearances in future episodes? No, I don't think so. I think once you eat a human, they just like, let's sweep this under the rug. These characters can never come back. <laughs> like, I just find there's so many people that are showing up to make a point and then are gone. Like they've been starting episodes like out of the blue with like characters you don't realize in like a situation we haven't seen before. And that's fine if you're building a world, but they're not. They're just being like, oh, we have to introduce something that's going to disappear by the end of this episode. It's frustrating. Yeah, that's the other thing, too. It can't be, yeah, coincidence that every single episode there's just random nobodies that show up. Like, that seemed like that was also their plan for the show at this point was, like, let's just adventure of the week, introduce some some losers that never come back. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and, yeah, it's kind of neat that once they they righted the course on that that they went back to people like Amy the Witch and stuff and they're like oh let's bring some of them back and try to redeem some of this nonsense but yeah at this point definitely everyone just shows up for uh, no reason and I should also point out I guess like I have very narrow tastes but I don't have good taste I definitely don't because like I even like that these kids are so lame because I feel like it fits with the hyena thing so they go into this hyena exhibit they're not supposed to be in and they're these quarantined you know, mystical hyenas that have mystical hyena powers and the kids get zapped by the hyena power, but it doesn't really do anything at this point. Like they were lame assholes before and now they're just magical assholes. (laughs) Like there's nothing, there's no way to even tell really that anything happened. They're just more obnoxious and more like making fun of people is really all they do. Yeah, their bulliness just amped up. But yeah, the only explanation we got to what was happening or why these hyenas were magical was that they were 
fresh from Africa. <laughs> <laughs> Africanized hyenas. The magical land of Africa. And that's all they felt they needed to do to explain to us why they were magical. They're from Africa. Incidentally, so yeah, Xander happened to be nearby, so he also gets uh, zapped with the hyena powers. So Buffy's still wearing Angel's leather jacket, but she just refuses to admit that she's into him. It's just, hey, it's Southern California. It's 90 degrees out. I need it. I need to wear this jacket. It completes her ensemble. Yeah, it matches the shoes or something, I think she said. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, they're just jumping ahead a little. Boy, did you guys notice the very last scene of this episode? Buffy is the most 90s I've ever seen her dress ever. Yeah. She's got like this little little beanie and just a, I don't know, it's crazy. Yeah. Just the 90 ishest clothes. <laughs> yeah, that, the head threw me off because when she was, I forget what she was doing, was she just like looking at, looking back at Xander and Willow and then they go back to her and she almost doesn't even look like her anymore. Like they made her look like less hot. I feel like they kind of hit the singularity because that look that they had right there is exactly a matchbox 20 fan (laughs) they nailed it on the week (laughs) yeah absolutely uh so xander's acting weird and he uh he smells buffy and he's not super happy that she took a bath (laughs) (laughs) yeah and then she says she's known for taking baths (laughs) but yeah so the the hyena this is coming through and uh, the rest of the hyena crew comes in this is at the bronze and uh just everyone is very intense and cool. And I like that about this episode too. Like just the the way the camera work and stuff just demonstrates how cool everyone is. I just feel like they really nailed it. Everyone seems very cool to me. I just wish I could be that cool. <gasps> yeah. Like I guess what you, what do you do? You just like don't open your eyes all the way and you just like, you know, don't make any quick sudden movements. Walk slowly with really depressing grunge playing behind you. I just thought like like Xander looked cool. I was like, he complete, you know, he, he's normally this lovable doofus, and now he's like this cool badass James Dean. I don't know. I was into it. Well, I guess that's one thing I like about this too. Okay, so uh, yeah, the other thing is like they they have the cool camera work and like let's make them look cool. But what I like too about this hyena thing is they're really not cool. They just tell bad jokes and then they all laugh their hyena laughs and. Uh, <laughs> Like, they make some, the hyena guys make, uh, oh, they insinuate that this kid is like the Goodyear blimp and should be floating over a stadium. And Xander laughs, and Buffy and Willow give him this look, and he's like, the kid's fat. <laughs> like, his delivery is yeah. so... And then hard cut to the <laughs> next scene. And, and you know what? Just as you said this now, made me hate this episode even more. So I didn't think of the idea of laughing hyenas. So they translated that to, they all tell jokes and laugh at each other. Is that right? Yeah, like they're they're powerfully uncool. They're not nothing they say is really clever or anything, but they just laugh to each other. Well, I, I got thoughts about that too. We'll get to it. Okay. So, uh, but I was gonna say, yeah, about Xander. Just, I mean, this is where this is where I thought Nicholas Brennan was a good actor back in the day. I mean, later projects proved that he is not. But yeah, like that he can pull this off so much. Like the just bumbling, goofy Xander is just cool as fuck in this episode. Mm-hmm. And it made me think of, uh, I think the first one I can, I'm aware of anyway, is back in the original Star Trek show, the Mirror Universe episode, where they meet the evil versions of themselves, and like Kirk's got a little goatee, and that means he's evil or whatever. And evil versions of characters are always cool in every TV show ever, basically. And here I think that's true too. I just think it's so cool to see evil Xander. I'm like, ah, evil Xander's the coolest. Yeah, but he was such an asshole. <laughs> yeah, but I mean that's how you be evil. <laughs> you know? Yeah, but didn't that make him seem so much sweeter when he finally went back to normal? He's a sweet boy. Yeah, I will say it was yeah, at the very end I was like, Oh, this is very nice and maybe the first time I did have a bit of heart for him. Oh but yeah. yeah, we got you. <laughs> No, we got you. because, yeah, like he went from being the like nice guys finish last to talking about Willow's pasty skin and never having to see it again. That's rough. Well, I think his his the exact line was so crazy to me because he was like, like, it's it's the most obvious redirect where he was like, Willow, uh, my feelings are changing for you. <laughs> I dropped algebra. <laughs> like, yeah, that's not about her at all. It's, it's, it's a, a totally different yeah. thought. 
Bad line. Don't forget that he uh, just slam dunked uh, an algebra textbook into the garbage. Oh, that was badass, though. (laughs) I was just going to say that. Yeah, I fucking love that. That's just anyone who throws their textbooks away is a man after my own heart. (laughs) Yeah, seriously. (laughs) But I was going to say, too, with Evil Xander, I think this is just neat because, yeah, like pretty much in every TV show ever, if there's an evil version, it's always cool. But in this show, too, like I was thinking about it and most characters, most of the major characters at some point find a way to be their other version of themselves, you know, for lack of a better term, the evil version of themselves. And it's always cool. But what I was thinking what's weird is that Cordelia is her evil version right now. Yeah. <laughs> She's the only one who becomes the good version of herself later. <laughs> so that's pretty weird. Is there ever an evil Giles? Oh, there sure is. And he's fucking awesome. Oh, I love it. <laughs> oh, and there's like a... I don't want to spoil it, but there's a fun Giles thing where he's uh, badass Giles. Nice. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah. Like, evil everyone is pretty great. And yeah, Giles is one of the best evil versions. He's he's great. Nice. Evil's the wrong word, but you'll, yeah, when we get there, it's good stuff. Okay. I, mean, I think we're talking about the same thing, yeah. but yeah, that's a good <laughs> yeah, one. It's cool. Uh, so then, yeah. So again, just even just the style, I guess, of this episode, because I just felt like I was starving for, for anything that I... Uh, I liked on any level in these other episodes. So this dodgeball game, like it's just super like slow motion shots and it's just like super dramatic Mm -hmm. and stuff. But I just love it. I love this scene. And it just it totally reminds me of Heather's of just like it's high school, but it's hell. It's war. It's like fucking this is what's important. It's just this stupid dodgeball game. And it just that it basically just shows the unity between the hyenas. And I guess what I like about this is as far as like metaphor zone or whatever, what I what I took out of the hyenas, I'm just making this up myself. I don't know that any of this was intended. But the hyenas are such a, a close pack. And they don't tell good jokes, but they all think it's funny. And they all laugh to each other. And it's like, what else do you really need? Like, do you need everyone else to think you're cool? Or do you just need your friends to think you're cool? Like, if you've got these five people that are all, all have each other's backs and all think each other are cool... Doesn't that make you cool? Aren't these the coolest fucks ever? If you think about it, aren't we all the hyenas? <laughs> yeah, I mean, aren't we right now? Like, we're like the hyena pack, you know? We're just, like, laughing at this show and making dumb jokes. And, like, the other day when we were hanging out and we were making weird <laughs> jokes that no one on Earth would even understand. <laughs> yeah, I do think... Is that not us? Are we not the hyenas? <laughs> Holmes, Holmes has not... <laughs> <laughs> Whomsoever <laughs> has not eaten a principal. Who among us hasn't eaten a principal? Uh, one of the reasons why I liked, like this episode of this show is because, you know, we were talking about how the fun part of this show at this point when there's not a ton of fun to be had is just that it's a high school drama. And, you know, it's just fun to watch high school shows. Yeah. So, I mean, that that definitely gets me for sure. Like this episode, it just... It, it, uh, what do you call it when you play a harp? Pluck. It plucks. It plucks my little heart strings a little bit, my little soul strings of like, like I would love to be in the hyena group because they don't give a fuck. Like to me, school was such high pressure awfulness that like, ah, oh, this just is like, even to this day, now that I'm 20 years later and I'm a, a full grown man, that notion of like, oh, you just go to school and you just don't care. You don't feel it, you know? Like, they don't even care that they're telling bad jokes. They don't care about anything. And then it's like, yeah, that's the little school fantasy I want to have. I love it. I love how it feels. I hate to break it to you, but you don't have to be that group of people to go to school and not care about it. The majority of groups went to school and didn't care about it. The drama kids just sat in a black room. The smokers who were so dumb would just sit on a bench. Yeah, the uh, smelly girls. <laughs> <laughs> the cowboys. <laughs> Remember from episode one? Oh, yeah. I sure yeah, do. thank you for illustrating the callback. Did you notice, too, when the hyenas, like, for some reason, just Xander's random guitar friends? Xander, you know the guitar. Anyway, the hyenas make fun of those those dweebs. And someone says, that is not cool. And you ever notice that the only time a character says that is not cool is when someone else is being unbelievably cool? (laughs) (laughs) Good point. Uh, And then, yeah, the hyena gang eat the school mascot, question mark? Because, yeah, they don't quite, they're not totally clear about it at first. But I'm just watching the episode and I'm like, 
Wait a fucking minute here. Did they eat that pig? <laughs> they did say that Xander did it. They did? At the end of the episode. Yeah. Did Xander... Oh, yeah, Xander. Yeah, it's true. Xander didn't help kill the principal, but he did eat the pig. Uh, <laughs> Just, mm, yeah. Okay. Rip in peace, Herbert the pig, uh, 1997 uh, to 1997. Oh, wait. I also um, wanted to point out that during that dodgeball scene, the soundtrack was just like jungle music oh yeah that well they they play that into a bit where again like i don't think that really landed but i like that someone was giving a fuck that there was definitely that vibe to the music throughout of just like tribal music yeah it's supposed to tie into the africanized hyenas and yeah i don't know that that really worked but but i liked that somebody tried you know like <laughs> that's why i guess i feel like they were trying with this episode it's certainly i mean apparently it's one of the top 10 worst of all time but uh <laughs> Yeah, I feel like there's somebody put more more back back effort, put their back into it a little more <laughs> in this one. There you go. It yeah. just felt it felt like like to your point about it, you know, the when nothing fun is happening, we're falling back on the high school story. But like that is what I'm interested in. And there really has been none of that. Like it's been like a little taste with like when Willow and Buffy were like Oh, just admit it. Just admit it. You like him. I'm like, yes, yes, let's do this. <laughs> and then... And we got a little bit of Willow like Sander, too, and a little more of that in this episode. So little of it, though. Yeah, Like, yeah. just the... I, I just am excited to learn more about them, because right now they're just very, very shallow people, <laughs> characters. But yeah, so Xander uh, told Willow, basically, that she can go take her pasty face and fuck off, and he has super hearing, like... It's like the powers are slowly building now of like he has hyena hearing so he can hear Willow crying like way up on the second floor balcony. And this was is kind of our first introduction to what will be like a nuclear weapon later of Alison Hannigan's ability to act of just like to be sad. She's just this big ball of just this big sad face that just like fills the screen with sadness. And in this case, it's just some stupid hyena bullshit. But later on, it's like, uh, there's going to be some times when Willow gets sad and you feel fucking terrible. Yeah, Allison Hannigan's wide range of acting. Be sad or be sadder. <laughs> or <laughs> flute in pussy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the holy trinity. That really is kind of a forgotten role, right? Yeah. That was so famous back in the day. But yeah, I feel like that kind of got that's forgotten a little bit now. Yeah, I it dawned on me much later that like in the first episode, we were talking about all her like, iconic work that she's done or whatever and somehow we forgot about that which was like so huge yeah like that was huge for her i bet that was like a big part of her success just that one funny line and it was all probably a lot in her delivery of like mm -hmm. her like really innocent delivery of that line uh so as you remember uh speaking of miss french that uh you mentioned mike how insane it was that buffy's just like hey mantises can turn their head 180 degrees miss french is a mantis so yeah. sign sealed delivered i figured it out yeah <laughs> very similar this time yeah where she's just talking to giles in the library and it's like well we were at the zoo hyenas they're all hyenas yeah i wrote it down too giles says something about oh it's like they're preying on the weak and she's like prey on the weak where have I heard that before? They're hyenas. I was like, whoa. <laughs> yeah, Giles makes the joke of like, oh no, he's acting mean to the less fortunate. How terrible. He's a 16-year-old boy. <laughs> and Buffy's like, get the fuck out of here. It's Monster of the Week. He's a monster. It's, it's fucking hyenas everywhere. Uh, but we also learned, so this is where I, like, this is what I like about this. Is like, maybe it's like, none of this was particularly well executed, but I feel like, Again, the underlying concept of this episode is a lot better than the previous ones where it just starts out kind of almost silly. Like, OK, so they were making fun of people before and now they're just making fun of people again. Like, wh what is the point of being a hyena? What is the magic here? But they're learning now through the medium of eating a school mascot that the hyena power is growing, like how Xander could hear things and they're just getting weirder. And basically this murderism is just going to keep escalating where they're going to get stronger and stronger and stupider and stupider and more and more animalistic as things go. And I just, I really like that. It, it like adds again how I felt like, you know, uh, Miss French or whatever, it's fucking the witch. Like there's no real stakes or escalation. It's just, here's a problem. Oh, we fixed the problem. It's over. I like that this one, it's like the little uh, race against time kind of like, okay, we got to do something about this because Xander is just kind of an asshole right now. But 
he's murdering a pig. Soon he's going to murder principals. Then he's going to murder babies. Then he's going to murder Buffy because he's getting stronger and stronger. Yeah. And I just think that's a cool idea. I like that principals are weaker than babies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't totally clear when they were like, oh, what's going to happen if we don't turn it back? And then they showed that picture and it was just like, what was it? Just people with their legs cut off or something? <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Just a bunch of stumps. Yeah, I think that was supposed to insinuate that somebody who had been possessed by an animal spirit massacred those people. But yeah, I don't think that's what that picture was. <laughs> just, <laughs> just a bunch of stumpy boys. Just yeah. a picture of some, some gross shit. But yeah, like between all the people getting eaten and animals being eaten and that picture, like this does seem like a distinct shift to... Uh, like trying to be legitimately scary instead of like, oh, no, it's a witch, <laughs> you know? Like I wonder if this is a direction that they're distinctly trying to move in of like, let's try to age this up a little bit because this show is embarrassing, <laughs> you know? Yeah, maybe. There's just been like so little cohesion at all and the monsters have been insane. Like nothing, it, this is not a show right now. <laughs> this is not a show. So I hope that is. They're like, wait a minute, we got... The the hyenas did exactly what vampires do. Yeah, let's get back to vampires. That'd be nice. Uh, so we were talking last time about uh, just the Xander type person, particularly in real life, where they're so entitled and they just feel like, oh, I'm the nice guy. How come I don't get to have fucking everyone's pussy on my face all the time? And <laughs> it makes them a dick. Mm -hmm. So we really get that big time here, but it's because of the hyena spirit. But you know what they say, like the hyena spirits. Is your true Words are spirit. sober man's thoughts. Mm -hmm. yeah, this is the same. <laughs> because, uh, yeah, Xander's full on like, oh, you like tough guys? You like tough, cool guys? Well, who's tough and cool now, huh? You want me to be tough? You want me to be cool? How about I just assault you now, Buffy? How about that? Yeah. And it's like, whew, like, I mean, it's the hyena spirit, but yikes. Yeah. <laughs> like, Julian said it at the end of the episode. Like, Xander's like, oh, I didn't do anything embarrassing, did I? And it was like, nah. And Julian was like, oh, no, you just sexually assaulted one of your best friends. Let's forget about it. By 90s standards, it was, uh, it's just, it's all, it's, it's all in good fun. <laughs> <laughs> I was excited that uh, this was, remember when we watched the very first episode and I was like, oh, that cage is there in the library. Yeah. And they used it. They used it in this episode, which I forgot about. Wait, what did they use it for? Xander was in that, remember he was in that cage in the library? Oh, yeah. I didn't realize that was the library. Yeah. So Xander's, yeah, he's getting stronger and stronger and dumber and dumber. And uh, Buffy manages to knock him out and yeah, puts him in that convenient library cage, which it is awesome. Like, I wonder what possible like it makes total sense if you're dealing with uh all manner of what was it julian all manner of ghouls and something <laughs> a whole menagerie of ghouls and goblins or whatever it was just some super insane thing. but yeah but as an actual library it's like are those what are those like what what could you the rare books that the high school has what could you possibly need a cage for it's where you put the ADD kids before they're diagnosed. Yeah, just get in the cage and you, with convenient <laughs> holes for stick poking. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Buffy and Giles go to talk to the zookeeper and he's shockingly knowledgeable about all this mystical mumbo jumbo about animal spirits and all this fucking shit. And him and Giles have a little powwow about, oh, what books have you got and all this stuff. But then it turns out later it's because... Like, it all makes sense. It's like because the zookeeper, he didn't just happen to accidentally have the Africanized hyenas. He was trying to do this from the get-go. He brought them in so that he could do the ritual and he could get the hyena power in himself because he has an old school principle that he wants to eat. <laughs> <laughs> I was very thankful when that reveal happened because when they first went to the zoo and, like, somehow the zookeeper was, like, knows all about, like, this paranormal magical stuff, I was like, what? He's a zookeeper. But then it all made sense because he'd been planning it all along. Yeah, so in a lot of ways, like, I'm definitely, I'm not really asking for much. This episode to me has enough of that clockwork feeling. Like, the ultimate example people always talk about is, like, Back to the Future. Like, the most perfect movie script where everything references something else and everything ties together and everything makes sense. This is not that. <laughs> but it does a little bit, you know? Like, this little thing does lead to this and this happened because of this. And that is just more than the previous episodes have have offered us. <laughs> so again, it's not it's not much, but to me, to my little brain, like I can roll around this plot in my mind and actually think about it. 
And I just couldn't do that before. So that's mainly where I'm coming from, that I think this episode's cool. And just the tone. The tone of Xander and the hyenas walking around looking cool. Yeah. That's really all this episode's got going for it. But that's a, that's enough for me in season one of Buffy. I can definitely get behind all that for sure. And for me, it was the, the final admittance that Willow has a thing for Xander and that Buffy has a thing for Angel. Like, things we all know, but I don't know. I like that shit. Did you guys notice that on the principal's desk, there was a photo of himself yeah. <laughs> facing outwards? Did I notice? It was like they, they focused on it for like three quarters of an hour. <laughs> I wish. Oh, I would love this episode so much if that's what it was. Yeah, that fucking principal, Principal Flutie. And yeah, he's one of these like long forgotten Buffy characters. So I was like, who is this guy? It's so weird because we had that Stephen Tobolowsky pres- uh, principal in the pilot, the mm-hmm. unaired pilot. And then we get this principal flutie guy that just floats around and is a little funny and a little weird. And but like Mike was saying, the next principal, he's thumbs up. He's really good. So do they address the death of the principal or just bring another one in? I think they said it at the end of the episode, right, where Willow's like uh, the vice prince, vice principal's taken over for now until they can find a new one. And I see. Yeah, but I, I think they gave him an appropriate level of respect because he fucking sucks. He's a weird idiot <laughs> with his own picture. Imagine that's how death was. Like, you just get the appropriate amount of respect, and that's it. Just just a little goodbye. Uh, that's all he deserved. Julian, you, you said you were a Deep Space Nine fan, right? Yeah. So... The next principal is the the guy that plays Quark. Hell yeah. Yeah, and not only that, he's also Andrew Ryan in Bioshock. He's fucking great. He's awesome in everything that he's ever done. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's my shit. I know that one for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Would you kindly, am I right, Ryan? <laughs> <laughs> Good one, my man. <laughs> you know it. <laughs> He really is awesome. Yeah, I'm looking forward to him. I thought he was a season two guy, but since our principal just got eaten, maybe he shows up in season one. He could show up next time. I thought he was a season two guy too, so I guess we'll see. Uh, Yeah, and then this is the scene next up where uh, the hyenas are threatening the lady with the baby. And just, yeah, because we've already killed, you know, we're escalating up the chain from from pig to principal to baby. It's just so cool because it's like, well... I'm almost sure they're not going to eat a baby, but I didn't think they were going to eat the school mascot, and I really didn't think they were going to eat the principal. So who knows, you know? And, like, even that level of investment in a scene is, again, just more than this show has given me so far. Like, Jesse just died and no one even cared. Yeah. So, you know? That thought did cross my mind. I was like, he, they can't eat this baby. But, like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it really seems like they're setting this scene up for something. Was it maybe, like, a little bit of a, like... I don't know. Hyenas are kind of like dingoes. Dingo ate my baby. Yeah, I was thinking that too. Dingoes ate my principal. Totally happened. <laughs> That's the name of my band. <laughs> yeah, that should be. Yeah, dingoes and hyenas, I feel, are probably pretty much the same thing, right? I didn't look into that at all, but... Yeah, sure. Why not? So the uh, Xander's in the cage, but the pack went to go rescue him because they're a pack, you know? And they're, as their powers grow, they also are more and more connected. And uh, Willow's the only one looking after Xander so it's like oh no that could be a thing but they didn't really play up that too much where Willow just she gets away and it's not a big problem but Buffy lures the pack back to the zoo and this is where you find out that the zookeeper was trying to do this whole time was trying to draw out the hyena spirits for himself even though he knows full well it's going to take over his mind and he's going to just be a crazy killer and he'll probably just get gunned down in a hail of police gunfire but I don't know I don't know what his long-term plan was but what's funny is yeah it's like they didn't really play up willow in danger as much as i expected but then in this scene willow runs into the zookeeper guy and is like oh they're on their way what, what are we doing and he's like oh no no sweat let's just do this real quick and he just ties her up <laughs> and she just stands there and lets herself get tied up until she's <laughs> fully tied up and she's like wait what is this <laughs> like, <laughs> it's a little bit late for that uh, there's a scene before that where before the uh, zookeeper gets all make up up in the zookeeper's office talking about like, oh, yeah, I guess we could do a reverse trans possession on him. <laughs> yeah. As if that's just a normal thing to say. Oh, I don't know why we didn't think about that. <laughs> that's like a yeah. classic like Star Trek. In Star Trek, they reverse the polarities <laughs> all the time. It's like, who knows what that means, but it's always the solution. Yeah. <laughs> but I like that, too. Yeah, that Giles recognizes that there's uh, all the symbols on the ground and stuff are set up. And it's like, oh, like, that's what happened before. It wasn't just that the kids randomly got infected. It's because the zookeeper already had all this shit set up and was trying to do this stuff. So it's just just enough. Like, that's enough for me to to buy it. I'm like, oh, okay. So the, the ritual was already set up and the kids walked in. And 
again, I'm going to make up my own stuff. I'm going to guess the hyenas probably didn't want to be a weird old bald guy. (laughs) But when some cool kids came in, and not only that, a pack of them, they're like, yeah, yeah, take them. We want them. So it's like, yeah, this all, this works for me. This makes sense. And again, yeah, like just because like a lot of times I think of when I watch TV shows and stuff, it is just like it's like a little Rubik's Cube. It's just a fun thing to play with in my brain and that I can actually do that with this episode, that there's even room for me to come up with my own dumb fan theories is uh, it's like, OK, imagine you're drowning. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and with this episode, my nose is out of the water. And I'm like, wow, that is so much better than drowning that I'll take it. Oh, my God. (laughs) So, so yeah, when I say I like this episode, that's what I'm talking about. I'm not drowning. Wow. I do love the, like, banality of here is this zookeeper guy that looks like he plays in, like, an all-bass band on his spare time. (laughs) um, Who is also, like, like a a witch person and knows how to do trans possessions. I want to hear that band. The band is actually called trans possession. <laughs> <laughs> Reverse. <laughs> well, maybe that's what, after he gets all the hyena spirits in him, sadly, Buffy just threw him in the hyena pit and he immediately got eaten. So we never get to see his plan, but maybe he was going to be a one man band. Like he'd use the intense power of the hyena to just go crazy and play every instrument by himself. Wait, would it be like the kind of one man band where uh, he's got the drum attached to his foot? You know, one of those. With his intense hyena powers, he could do things a one man band has never dreamed of. Uh-huh. Like he could, <laughs> it would be that would be just the start. I like this more than the episode. <laughs> it was a little shocking that they didn't like have some kind of magical solution or like a reverse trans possession or something. They just fully murdered him <laughs> like in front of everyone, just threw him into the pit. And then I guess they're fine and not arrested for murder. Yeah, this definitely goes against that thing I had heard. I remember I said in our first episode about uh, what I had heard about the vampire faces was because WB didn't want people to get killed every week. So they're like, hey, make them look like demons. But that flies in the face a little of the multiple murders that have happened this episode. Yeah. (laughs) The zookeeper had face paint, so it's fine. (laughs) And yeah, he just came straight from a Tostitos commercial or some shit. (laughs) Like, (laughs) fuck this guy. No one cares about him. He just looked like, to me, uh, it made me think of like a sports fan in like an arena or something. Yeah, totally. With with, like really shitty face paint. Can I share my favorite line from this episode? Oh, yeah, please do. Uh, Or my favorite, also my kind of moment, uh, because it was another example of the food at the bronze for some reason when Buffy's eating a croissant <laughs> and and a glass of coke <laughs> like what a great meal that was and then Xander comes over and he takes a bite of it and he's like birds live on this stuff <laughs> yeah. birds classically known for hunting down croissants in the croissants. wild <laughs> I guess though I was gonna say we could add that to our list, our tally of best and worst of like best and worst food at the bronze, because last week it was the bran muffin that wet boy Owen brought Buffy that he dipped in water and then gave to her. But uh but surely this is it, right? Like I just don't remember a lot of food at the bronze. Like I, this has gotta be the end of it, right? But I hope not. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe I'm just hypersensitive to it now. Like, as soon as I saw it, I was like, oh, yeah. No, I noticed yeah, it's yeah. so hard. Well, I, li- I like croissants. They're delicious. And that muffin looked terrible. So I was it was an upgrade for me. Hey, uh, quick question. Um, what the fuck is the bronze? Like, it's, <laughs> it's a, a, a band space. <laughs> But it's also a cafe, I guess. Yeah, and it's so dark. It's bizarre. This it's so no dark. students have this place. This doesn't exist. And there's like no adults there ever. It's always just teenagers and early twenties people who are clearly not adults. And a librarian. Oh sorry, my mistake. I wonder if they instituted maybe not a full ban, but like a soft ban on 43-year-old people. Because, <laughs> yeah, we haven't seen Giles since. No, but we did see him kickboxing in the library with Buffy. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. Just in the middle of the day, and he's like, okay, you should run off to class before I lose feeling in my hand. You should probably get used to that. <laughs> it's weird, too. Like, it does seem like that's something that should be delegated, but I guess he can't, right? Like, he can't hire a coach or anything for Buffy because no one can know that she is so powerful but yeah i don't know just get like a weird scarecrow or something it's weird to literally punch the librarian (laughs) i'm sorry uh get a weird scarecrow yeah you know like uh 
I was going to say pummel horse, but that's not right. But, you know, like, isn't there like a human looking thing that sometimes kickboxy people kickbox with? Yeah, it's like a rubber human that's like really weighted on the bottom. So like you punch it. Yeah, get a real doll. Just get a real doll and let her (laughs) beat it up. Or just a gym membership. I mean, watch your organization. seems to have a lot of money. They can get her a gym membership and she can go nuts. Uh, So then just to the little denouement of the episode. So Xander has been healed and uh, he claims to not remember what happened. You know, he got possessed by a hyena. And next thing he knows, you know, it's days later and Willow's in trouble. And it's like, oh, no, I lost all those days. But then uh, Giles comes up and is like, "I, I read all those books, me and the fucking bass player guy we fucking (laughs) spent hours just talking about this shit and there is no evidence that you should not remember all the horrible things you said and did and he's like you're not going to tell anyone that i am a rapist right (laughs) 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 and giles is like not this time (laughs) your secret's safe with me boy and then he looked directly into the camera and winked (laughs) And it closed in, wiped on his eye. <laughs> it's the 90s. But I did kind of like that last scene. Because, yeah, there's always the last scene in these episodes. There's the, uh, oh, no, Amy's mom is in the statue. And then, oh, uh, there's mantis eggs in the school. And, oh, the anointed one. I guess that's a thing. Ooh, uh. I like that this one, at least, I felt something. Again, like, my bar is still pretty low at this point. But that there's something. That I'm like, oh, man, like, just the... Uh, the pain of being a teenage boy. It's nothing but hormones and embarrassment and horrible thoughts and feelings that you can't tell anyone about. And now Xander just has even more of those just weighing down on his head. He's just like, God, I'm the worst. <laughs> so I felt a little bad for Xander. Who doesn't? Yeah, like I remember as a teenager the first time that I ate a live pig. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, like that is pretty weird, right? He's still so deeply repressing that he killed his friend Jesse that he'll never talk about it again. Yeah. And now he's also got to deal with the fact that he knows what it's like to eat a pig, a live pig. That's fucked up. <laughs> but at least he didn't take part in eating the principal. So yeah, ha 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 ha, fuck you, Xander. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're just here to laugh at you. That was the like that scene when they were like, they ate the principal, but Xander didn't do it, right? No, Xander's right here in the cage. He couldn't have done. It, it was like that. It reminded me of that scene in uh, in that Man of Steel movie where it was like, oh, he destroyed all these buildings, but luckily that island had been evacuated yesterday. Or whatever. <laughs> yeah, that was totally insane. Yeah, they just put in that dialogue to just be like, don't think about it too hard, but it's okay. Everyone's okay. <laughs> yeah, your favorite character is not a murderer yet. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I guess we could say the pack. I definitely got considerably more out of it. But hey, you know, that's the fun of having four hosts. We get our, it's like Herman's Head. You guys remember that show? No. Oh yeah. No. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> it would be weird if you did. See, I love this show, uh, this episode. Everyone else, not so much. But yeah, the next one is Angel. So I mean, something has to happen about vampires. It just has to. Yeah, I feel like we'll get a little more anointed one action in here. Maybe some master stuff. That'd be cool. Yeah, try to figure out what's going on with this plot. But But as far as our best and worst episodes go, I think we can uh, agree just based purely on the fact that there are no other ones, that the best Xander episode so far is the pack, right? (laughs) We can all agree on that. Yeah, I'll I'll give that. But it it definitely will not even be close to the top because, man, there's some good Xander episodes coming up, so... I'm so excited to see because you love him for reasons that I don't, so I'm, I'm excited to see those episodes yeah it's probably i don't know what do you think mike have you ever spent have you spent the last 20 years psychoanalyzing your love of xander no i haven't i think i liked him when i watched it originally because i think i could relate with him but not i didn't i don't know and maybe he changes but you're you're looking at him through a lens of like oh he's an incel no which i don't think he really comes (laughs) off like that no it's not that's 100 percent not it it is okay it is oh it's just so tough to explain it is like he's more of a white supremacist (laughs) no it's just like it's this guy who in high school was like not really that cool and didn't get a lot of girls and like always thought he like he was sad that he didn't and then he moves away to university and all of a sudden can like get it in and then thinks that anybody who liked him before is like super below him because willow like clearly likes him 
And, like, any other guy would, like, he's just so obsessed with being, like, the hotter chick. And Willow isn't good enough for him. And if he went away to university, he would, like, go home during Thanksgiving and hook up with Willow. And only hook up with her when he was home for the holidays. But, like... This is so specific. (laughs) Like, this 100% happened to you. And you're projecting it unfairly onto a (laughs) character in a TV show. Yeah, this did happen to me. But also... (laughs) I knew it. (laughs) There's no way that your your description was so specific. My my female friends listening to this, please comment that you know who this guy is. This is not just me, I promise you. But yeah, like to me, this episode is a perfect example. Like, uh, you know, even if this one is just, this is just for me. This is just my, one of my personal Mm -hmm. faves. But like that's what's so rare about this show is I, I feel so totally comfortable with how much I love this episode and I don't mind that everyone else hates it. Like both things just make total sense where like that's a really hard thing to find. Usually it's like if people don't like what you don't like, it's like annoying. I just don't feel that way with Buffy. I'm like, yeah, why would they like it? It's fucking stupid. But I love this one. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Well, knowing you, that is definitely a rare thing. <laughs> yeah, it really is. Like even the other show, even like Angel and Firefly, I don't feel that way about. Like I don't think I would want to do Firefly with you guys because I love it too much and it would hurt me if you didn't like it. <laughs> but Buffy, I'm like, whatever. It's fucking Buffy. Fuck it. <laughs> it's great. Yeah, this, this show is a gift. I love it. <laughs> nice. Overall. But does it suck? Sure does. <laughs> <laughs> I guess on that note, if we're all done, should our, our sweet baby boy sing us into the sweet night? And if we're very lucky, if we listen very closely, maybe midway through Julian's outro, the dog will bark. If we're very lucky. <laughs> hey, hey, guys. Uh, it's me, your sweet baby boy. Um, uh, and we, we did definitively decide that Buffy does so One of us decided that Buffy does suck, <laughs> but maybe the rest of us didn't decide that yet. The dog is still figuring that out, but you can hear her and us next week on the, the Buffy Does Buffy Suck podcast. In, in two months, <laughs> it's going to be a 30 minute outro. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Nice. Nice. The rest of the pack was spotted outside Herbert the mascot's cage. They were sent to the principal's office. Good, that'll show them. Did it show them? <laughs> they didn't hurt him, did they? They, uh, ate him. They ate Principal Flutie? Ate him up? Mm-hmm.